you know, you probably you probably done done enough on earth. That's what I'm reading. And I'm like, uh, but the last time when y'all shut the doors, I go every January, my birthday, and COVID came out in January, December, January, so that's when the whole world shut down. And I'm like, y'all discovered I'm high, let's get some check. I know I'm healed, but I'm on some medical, some, you know, some second opinion, know how hard I got to pray. I ain't scared to pray, but let's, you know, since y'all are going to try to tempt me that I got it, I'm a high, let's, let's get some recognition. Send me the specialist, and, you know, got women looking at me in those places and all that. I got to go through that humiliation. Yeah, you know, sister come all in there watching my stuff and all this, man. I'm like, I got to go. I'm just serious. It's humiliating. She like, you ain't never done this before. Now I ain't never done it. Now so ain't no you looking at me. Sticking sticking the probing up you, the wands up in you. I ain't trying to trip you up, but it ain't like pretty. You hollering and screaming. And then y'all go, well, we can't see you, see you, see you. So I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know how I got over there, man, but that's, that's freaked me out. Where, where was I? <laughs> God help me. It was a test. We walking by faith. They shut the whole world down. And so here I am with that situation. Got to, got to believe God and, 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 and got an evil report. PSA is high. And these folks don't care about my life. Anyway, it'll come back to me. Really. But I'm healed by his stripes. Self-examination. Something was going on with me, you know. But I do know when I went back at a later time, it had dropped, and it was where it is, and it's normal, you know. But the whole attitude of people, like, they didn't care. They scared of dying of COVID. And I'm walking around with a deadly virus in me. What you going to do in the meantime? Commune with God. Get clean, but on the report, that's where I was. Everything looked good, but now you're going to see my PSA is high, and you ain't going to say nothing. So what examination is from God is he wants you to complete. You want a complete check over. Oh, come on, be with me for a minute. I ain't going to hold you. When you go to him, Lord, I'm, don't say I'm good over here. I want to be completely good. Why? Because I want to enter into his courts and his gates. I want to get into his den. I want to get into his gymnasium. I want to get in his sauna room. I want to get in all the compartments of his house. Come on. I don't want him to have a great house and then he's like, oh, you can't go in there. Now, how my kids going to feel when they come on my house? They come in, I'm shutting doors. I shut doors to company that, you know, you, you limited. <laughs> don't we? I know some of y'all, oh, you go anywhere in my house. No, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, no, you do not What are you doing? What you, where are you going in there for? That's off limits to you. So in order to go in every room in the house that God has for you, you got to be clean to a certain place. I'm tired of only being able to get into the main foyer where the company come and say, well, you know, that now that's where the master bedroom is. But you can't never go. And I've discovered that if I would do certain things, I get the VIP treatment. I'm tired of being treated like company. And just coming to church can, can just be like company. Some folk is just company at the church. Yeah. My God. <laughs> I'm tired of that. Yeah. That group of y'all wait here until the great master say y'all can come in. Yeah. You know that usher to stand at the door and just won't let look through the window and <laughs> frown at you? Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> to, to the people and you be... You, you, you didn't like her. You, you went to another church because that. 
you look, you look at her. She's really a sweet woman, but her job is to look at you and say, <laughs> y'all know her. Well, she telling you, you got here too late. You're one of the ones that really wasn't interested. You, you always come in. You're too late. You had other stuff to do. You showed by your contempt of the house that you don't deserve carte blanche to be brought up front. So she looked through the door like, <laughs> you said that. You got your stockings on, got your hair all whooped up, thinking I ought to be, they ought to see me today, you know, because I'm a, I'm a beautiful alabaster box. You ought to come in, and she looking at you. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. You, must, you spend too much time on that alabaster box. Come on, praise him. Yes, you may as well praise him. Come on. It could have been washing that car so everybody can see you got a brand new car. It could have been getting that hair whipped, trying to get that last eyelash to straight, to be straight. I don't care what it is, you spend too much time on the alabaster box. <laughs> you mad at that usher. I'm going to leave y'all alone today because I got to move on quickly. Oh, he says, anyone who eats the bread to drink the cup of the master irreverently is like part of the crowd that jeered and spit on man is there. And, and is that the kind of remembrance you want to be part of? Is that crowd that really didn't show by their motive that they were really interested in getting in? See, irreverently. Examine yourself. Self-examination is both the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it's the best thing you'll ever do. But it's between you and God. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And I'm going to tell you, at first, it gets a little difficult because it's the place where you have to be really honest. And you got to just go out on a limb. And you got to go out on a limb to the place where you got to. And, and, and maybe I can help somebody, you know. We don't live under the law, but we break the law. And you just got to go out on a place where you can just say, you know, I'm a liar. You can't stay back behind the line and say, well, Lord, go there and say, I ain't lied. I ain't covered it, my neighbors. I ain't. You just got to go out on a limb. When you're cleaning house and you're mopping floors, you don't mop the living room if you, if you, know, if you ain't got carpet. You don't mop the kitchen and then say, well, I ain't going to mop the hall. hallway. ain't dirty. I, I, I'm going to mop the kitchen. Now, the kitchen hooked to the hallway, but I, let's see, I ain't going to mop the kitchen. Let's see, I mop this spot over here where he's sitting. Yeah, that look clean, so let me mop this spot. Yeah. You mop the whole house. When you run the vacuum cleaner, you don't just vacuum over here where Papa's sitting. And they say, well, let's see, I don't see no dirt right there. Yeah. Oh, let's mop, let's vacuum over here. You do the whole house. Before you know it, you look at the bag, and the bag is full of trash, the vacuum bag. Where did that come from? When you go in and you self-examine, you go in as a sinner. You wait on declaring yourself all righteous and holy because you're trying to get in for mercy. I'm trying to give you a tip now. You keep going in reminding him that it's because of his mercy. Because if you break one of the laws, you broke in him. And you done broke one of them. You, if you broke one, if you, you offended one, you, and so you don't go playing, playing games with the Lord. Oh, you didn't get me on that one. <laughs> you go in and say, Lord, and you quit wasting time, your time, because he can point right to the spot. You go in, just pick one. That's what I do. Just pick one. Because if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of all. Just pick one. Get to it. It's like somebody trying to talk to you and they go all around the world. Well, you man, get to the point. And the Lord wants you to first get to the point. You self-examine it. Get to the point. Lord. I have broken your laws. I have violated your commandments. If I, well, maybe 
Well, you know, I did it because uh, you, you wasted his time. Well, see, if she hadn't, uh, you know, put a, a thing over there, I was going to say, well, what did you do it? Well, they, they see, Lord, they, they prejudice over there. And, I, Lord, you know they prejudice. And they like, what did you do? <laughs> My husband, you know, Lord, he got bad attitude. And his attitude made me just get the butcher knife. And, and I wouldn't have put the butcher knife out if he had, you know, Lord, he kind of bumped up against me. And that's what you know I got that, that kindly temper. And you wasted your time and God's time. You just go in and sit and say, Lord, I got it. You just start picking stuff. But I ain't that. But you are. Because you are a sinner. Saved by grace. Every single day. Y'all help me now. I'm trying to help you. I'll be done here. Because when you just go in trying to say, oh, God, you're so nice and nice and nice, it'd be like your kid. You, most, most folk pray the Eddie Haskell prayer. Hello, Mrs. Cleaver. No, oh, you look good today. Oh, Mrs. Cleaver. Oh, I love your hair, Mrs. Cleaver. And she looks at Ward and like, Ward. <laughs> Eddie finna corrupt the beaver. And, And God is saying, you just hurting yourself because I got something for you. I'm finishing up here now. Y'all stay. Pastor ain't going to be long. I'm just going to give you something. Examine yourself. Test your heart. Come to this meal. This meal, this meal is your prayer time in holy awe. We only do communion. To kind of help us remember, come to your prayer time in holy awe every time. What is holy awe? Look it up. But if you don't know, I'll tell you. Holy awe is, oh, my God, be overwhelmed. You can't fake it. If you're faking it, find a be overwhelmed. Oh, my. What you can do if you want to with one, one swipe of your breath. Your arm, you could eliminate the whole world. With one <gasps> inhale, you could take my breath. Yeah. Holy ah. Oh, you're the ancient of days. If you just back away from me for a minute, even though I'm a young person, I'll die. If you don't protect me, incurable disease will get me. My family will be torn. My children, I need you for everything. Holy ah. Oh. I see people in other countries bowing down to statues and they look ridiculous. But help me at least to come that far with you. Holy ah. Oh. I see them with sheets on and walking with bald heads and walking on pilgrimages going around shrines, and I look at that and say, how ridiculous. But let me find that same thing in you. Yeah. Holy ah, ah to the place that the angels who say holy, you got to let me in. And if you can't find that, you got to find out, who is blocking that? What is blocking that? What is blocking that? Because that's like a boy, a young man, trying to get into his father's house. He's banging on the door. And the gangs is out there shooting bullets at him. And his father's like, he ain't getting in here. And you have to ask yourself watching that movie, what did the boy do? Why won't the father protect him any further than let him into the foyer, if that? Or he'll let him into the yard, but he won't let him into the house. The father don't trust him. Mm -hmm. 
The boy doesn't have an awe of respect for his father. The girl doesn't respect her father or mother. They're kin, but there's always, all right, why are you here? What brought you this time? Here, I'll let you stay tonight, but you stay right there. Because they know that deep inside, that child doesn't respect them. And even though they're this great, rich father, they're like, you know what? You stay right here. Don't come up these grand steps to your mother and I bedroom. You stay here. And they've got servants and butlers and different things. Y'all be up all night. Don't let them get past this little room, this little chamber here. And it's all because the kid, the woman, the man don't have the proper respect. You saw that movie. And we'd be like saying, why don't you quit holding a grudge against the father or quit whatever it is? And they won't. So until you can find that, you're going to always have a form of God's power. Come on, I'm slowing down. Watch me over here. You're going to always have a form, a little bit of presence. But he's never going to open up to us, all of us, the treasures of what he had. Because what's missing is not that I know where my father's house is. But he won't let you, even a son or a daughter, into the secret place. Now, catch this. Most people are happy. Listen to me, children. Most people are happy to be a servant. And that's what we are. But the Lord is trying to transform each of us into sons. And what the world is looking for is manifested sons but that comes out of serving and you know where the service comes from in getting into his presence so that he can help you break your jaws now you stay with me because I'm, I'm rushing but here's the key for all of us learning how to break your alabaster box because we put too much time into the alabaster box and the alabaster box is our flesh we do we do and so, let's finish here. If you give no thought or worse, don't care about the broken body of the master, when you eat and drink, you're running the risk of serious consequences. Now, this is all the Message Bible. That's why so many of you, even now, are listless, dull, no fire, you know, no brightness, and sick. And others have gone to an early grave. You've got to remember that every day of your life, there's a death sentence against you. Yeah. If you've got sleep apnea, it ain't that hose and machine that's saving you. Now, I'm talking because I have it. And by that, it means I'm a snore. Nothing to be ashamed of. I snore. When I get into a certain realm of sleep, I snore. But before I had it, I would, I would go to periods where I did not breathe. And I would wake up gasping for air. When I had my test, uh, the first night I had my test, they told me that I quit breathing like 45 times in an hour or something. It was a ridiculous amount of time. You stop breathing, man. The Lord has shown me it's not the machine that saved me. 
It's my angel that keeps poking me. Oops. Oops. So I got something to praise him for. The machine just assists me. But it's the angel that keeps waking me up. Do, do you hear what I'm trying to say to you? Amen. And so I carry it everywhere I go. On the plane, I don't go visit my mom and them or go see nobody. I care. If it can't go, I don't go. It's a part. Ain't, ain't no shame in my game. Amen. If it wasn't for shame, I'd take it to the Friday night prayer. I'd just have it plugged right up and do my thing. I won't. But my point is, it ain't the machine that's keeping me alive. It's God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying that to say, you got to examine yourself and be ready 24-7. Come on, praise him right now, because I'm here down the road real quick. This is going to help you when you go and you pray from now on. I promise you. That's why so many are sick, so many are without life, so many are, are gone to an early grave because they don't realize that every moment of your day, the, uh, of your life, the devil is trying to get you, trying to kill you in your sleep, trying to kill you, trying to take your breath away. All you got to do is quit breathing for like one, two, three minutes, and you will die. Somebody can gut check you. You can get the wind knocked out of you because you was in a car accident. You could trip and fall and hit, hit the corner of a curb the wrong way. <coughs> and you gone. It's the angel of the Lord. It's God's power that's keeping you. It ain't because Imsa can get there on time. Come on, give him another praise. Come on, give God a praise. I praise him every day. When you come to the place that you know you are a target, when you know that there's a, a target on your back, you go into your closet because your closet, beloved, is communion. Amen. I take, if I told you I took communion every day, you say, oh, man, he take communion. You actually pour the water in the wine every day? I do. Spiritually, I do. And some days, it's been a long time that, I, that I've done it in my closet, but I have done it. You don't have to wait till we do it at church. The bread and the, bread and the cup. Amen. Amen. But when you take it, the, the wine, let me tell you something, the wine, the wine represents something. It ain't just trying to, to quench your appetite because the, the length of the service. The wine represents his blood. That if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, you would die. You would go to hell. God, God, God is not uh, uh, saving us and keeping us saved because we good, because we got nice alabaster boxes. Hair ain't nothing but alabaster. Skin ain't nothing but alabaster. Teeth ain't nothing but alabaster. Bones is nothing but alabaster. As much time we put in, pretty hazel eyes ain't nothing but alabaster. Well-formed skin and, and good hips and have a fine figure and a fine muscular body, ain't, ain't nothing but alabaster, man, woman. Yours might be more prettier, nice color, and, and, and form better than, than the next guy. According to the world, the world says they like A rather than B. It ain't nothing but alabaster. You can spend all your Saturday getting your alabaster painted up and then getting somebody to, to, to work it up and the brothers in the gym getting the alabaster all fixed up. The bottom line, it ain't nothing but alabaster. I ain't saying that alabaster ain't cool. But it ain't nothing but alabaster. This is a jar of clay. Alabaster is nothing more but a jar of clay. This is a jar of clay. They different, but the bottom line is, if ain't nothing in it to satisfy my longing soul, it, it what the use? What's good into it? Uh, my God, you can go buy a whole bunch of glasses that look red when it's gold one or whatever color. And da, 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 da. Ooh, this one's pretty now, but that one's pretty now. But dad got it. Excuse me. But it ain't nothing to satisfy. What good is this? This is just as good as that. This would do what that would do. So it ain't the Alabaster that God's interested in. 
And we spend the whole week working on the alabaster. Jogging, walking, beauty shop, gym, food, eating, mental stuff for the alabaster. But the real essence of life, or the life we engaged in, men and women of God, ain't the jar. It's the precious Lord on the inside. I'm trying not to preach. And, and, and the reason I go in my closet is because I'm trying with everything that's in me, God help me to break the jar so that the Lord can flow on top of your head and fill the room. Have you ever tried to break? Oh, come on, children. Listen, it's like a butterfly when we was kids. Remember when you was a kid? When you was a kid, remember that? Yeah. And you would catch a bee, catch a bee, a butterfly or something, and you put them in a jar, yeah. and they did all they could to break out. Yeah. That's what we are. The essence of the spirit that God gave us is the precious Nord. It is. And all we're trying to do is break out yeah. of the alabaster, which is our flesh that surrounds us. So, 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 oh, I feel like shouting right here. You 